So let's look at energy in ecosystems. There's a few syllabus objectives here, but I've combined them because they're all very much related. So best thing to do at the end of the video is actually go back and check off on all of these syllabus objectives and making sure they're all really clear. First of all, some definitions. Biomass comes up again and again. Basically, it's about the amount of organic matter in the system, in the ecosystem, or in the food chain. But we're talking about the dry weight of it. So it uh, doesn't include water, obviously. So there's a biomass is the amount of organic matter. Trophic means feeding or nutrition. So we talk about trophic levels, uh, the feeding levels. So we'll talk about those. And productivity in ecology, what we're talking about is the rate of generation of biomass in an ecosystem. The primary energy source for all ecosystems is light from the sun. And I say nearly all because there's some organisms that are able to use uh, chemicals for energy, but predominantly it's energy from the sun. It's light energy. And that energy through a process of photosynthesis is transformed from solar or light energy to chemical energy. So it's a transformation or it's transformed because the energy changes form. And of course that occurs in the process of photosynthesis by our producers. So inorganic materials, carbon dioxide and water in the presence of visible light produces organic molecules or glucose and it's in that glucose that the energy is stored that's of course photosynthesis and that happens in green plants and other photosynthetic organisms so um, one of the syllabus objectives was talking about the carbon cycle because carbon in carbon dioxide is obviously the way carbon is in the atmosphere um, and in the biosphere, in living things, it's glucose and other organic carbon molecules is where the carbon is stored within the biosphere. So we're talking about energy transformation here because it's transforming, transforming the energy from light energy to chemical energy. But then through the ecosystem, through the consumers of the ecosystem, the energy is transferred from one trophic level or feeding level to the next. But energy is not recycled and ultimately the energy is lost and it's essentially lost as heat. So I'm going to explain that to you as well. So energy in ecosystems transformed and transferred. It's transformed from light energy to chemical energy uh, in biomass, and then it's transferred from one trophic level to the next when one organism feeds on another organism. And when it goes from one trophic level to the next, well, that's an energy transfer because the energy remains in the same form, that is chemical energy. But of course, through cellular respiration, when the energy then gets lost as heat, well, that's another transformation because it transforms from chemical energy to heat energy. So energy in ecosystems is both transformed and transferred and then transformed again. So the trophic levels then, the feeding levels, the first trophic level are our producers or our autotrophs, self feeders. They're the, the um, organisms that are able to use sunlight to produce um, bi biomass or organic, organic compounds. Uh, they are consumed by our primary consumers, which is our second trophic level. We could also call those herbivores. Our third trophic level is our secondary consumers or our carnivores. And then we've got our tertiary consumers, our fourth level, and sometimes a few more levels than that. But there is a limit to the number of trophic levels. And I'm going to explain why that's the case, but essentially it's because energy flow through ecosystems is very inefficient. We've also got decomposers and detritivores. I'm sure you've heard of decomposers before, maybe not detritivores, but um, let's talk about what they are. Now, 
essentially detritivores and decomposers, they break down dead uh, organisms and waste to release the nutrients, so the inorganic nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, back into the ecosystem, the circle of life. So how are they different then? Well, detritivores actually eat dead things uh, and, and, you know, feces, etc., and undigested food through internal digestion. Whereas, and, and so that's, for example, a worm. But decomposers, they actually don't do internal digestion. They actually release enzymes out, uh, which break down and digest the uh, organic material, the dead organisms, outside of the organism and then they suck it in through so that's external digestion just digestion occurs outside of the organism a uh, classic example of that is is a fungus like a, uh, a mushroom so they play a really important um, service to the ecosystem by releasing the nutrients and they derive their energy from eating the um, the dead organisms so we don't actually put those in as a, as a trophic level because, of course, they occur at every level of the, um, the food chain because they, they um, decompose all dead organisms and waste. So one way in which we can represent the transfer of energy through uh, an ecosystem is through a food chain. But it's only the single series um, of the energy transfer through the trophic levels. Importantly, the direction of the arrows go in the direction of energy flow, which way the energy flows through the ecosystem. And then of course we have food webs as well, which are more complex because there's a combination of multiple food chains that show the more complex relationship between producers and consumers. I mentioned that energy flow through an ecosystem is inefficient. Most energy is actually lost to the environment as heat. Only about 10% of the energy is transferred from one trophic level to the next. But why is it lost as heat? Well, it's essentially because these organisms, they, they, so they take in food and they use that food for their metabolic processes, for movement, um, for warm-blooded organisms, for keeping them warm. So essentially, all of that energy is consumed, uh, is used in cellular respiration for metabolic processes. The, the waste product of that is heat energy, which dissipates into the environment and is gone. So the rule of the 10% the temp, the rule basically says that about 10% of the energy is transferred from one trophic level to the next. But that's the average. It could be as low as 2%, it could be as high as 40%. Different levels of the ecosystem, of the food chain, have different um, efficiencies. So where does this energy go? Let's say we have 100 units of energy that get passed from one trophic level to the next when the organism eats the other organism. So we've got 100 units, where does that go? Some of, the, some of the energy, so 20 units of it, is lost in detritus. So basically in undigested food that gets passed as feces. 60 units of energy are used in cellular respiration. The byproduct of that is heat. Only 20 units go into the actual tissue of the organism. So it's stored as tissue in the organism so that when that organism gets eaten, well, those 20 units get passed onto the next trophic level. So in this particular example, we've got 20% efficiency. Now, so productivity is the rate in which biomass is generated. When we're talking about primary productivity, we're talking about the rate in which biomass is produced through photosynthesis. And we know that there's factors that can influence photosynthesis. Temperature, availability of light, for example, and availability of water are all factors that influence the rate of photosynthesis and therefore the rate of biomass generation. 
And of course, not all energy, not all energy in sunlight is actually converted to glucose uh, in photosynthesis. So, you know, all of the, the sunlight that actually hits a leaf, some of it goes straight through, is transmitted. Some of it is reflected, bounces back. Some of it is lost through evaporation or, or evapotranspiration. That energy is used for um, converting liquid water to gas water, to uh, water vapor um, through the process of transpiration. Quite a lot of the energy is used for that. What's left is actually used in photosynthesis. Now, that photosynthesis uh, in, in a plant, the photosynthesis is actually producing glucose and much of that is actually used by the plant for cellular respiration. And the rest of it actually goes into producing biomass. So I've drawn what we call a Sankey diagram. Not a, a, I apologize for it being a little bit wonky. But it, this, for example, we're saying the gross primary production, this is all of the energy that's actually produced through photosynthesis. But some of that is lost as heat. This is theoretical here, where I'm saying out of 700 joules, 300 joules of it is lost as heat through cellular respiration, plants undergoing cellular respiration for its metabolic processes. And in this case, 400 joules of energy is then goes into biomass or producing tissue within the plant that's storing that energy. So gross primary production is the total amount of organic matter produced, um, but not all of that energy is passed on to consumers. Some of it is actually used by the plant so the net primary production is what actually gets passed on to the consumer. Now we can look at the same thing for our consumers as well. So secondary productivity is talking about um, the amount of biomass that's generated by the consumers. So a consumer consumes another organism and it takes in this amount of energy in the food. Some of it passes straight through the organism and is passed out as feces, so undigested food. Some of it is used for cellular respiration and is lost as heat. So only a small amount of that energy actually goes into tissue, creating biomass, making the consumer fatter or more tissue to store that energy So in this particular example, we're talking about like, what is that, 25? No, so in this particular example, it's almost 10% of the energy is part from, from so, so this particular example is around about, it's almost 10% energy efficiency. But the take home message is that some of the energy um, is actually passed straight through as feces, some of it's used for cellular respiration. So not all of it is transferred through to the next trophic level. Now, there's a limit to the number of uh, trophic levels there are in an ecosystem because there's less energy available, but also as you go further up the food chain, there's the, 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 the consumers at the top of the food chain uh, or the energy flow as you go further up the food chain is actually even more inefficient. At higher trophic levels, more energy is lost to cellular respiration and to heat and to decomposers. So overall, there's a smaller percentage that's actually passed on to the next trophic level. Maybe that's because these um, higher level, our tertiary consumers are more energetic uh, they're larger. So one way we can represent energy and biomass in uh, ecosystems is through ecological pyramids. So it's basically it's a graphical representation of the relationship between the different living organisms at different trophic levels. So we have pyramids of numbers, the number of organisms, a pyramid of biomass, so the actual mass of, um, of organic matter, and the actual energy as well. Let's have a look at some examples. So a pyramid of numbers, um, if this is like a grassland, all of these are grass 
organisms here, and that's a classic pyramid shape. But if you have a forest ecosystem, well, you've got the, the producers are often really large trees. So it kind of looks like a weird representation because you have a really narrow base because you've got few trees. The pyramid of biomass is an interesting one as well. It's actually uh, a model of the amount of living matter that's transferred through a food chain. Again, it can look a little bit weird at times. So a terrestrial ecosystem looks like a classic pyramid. However, an aquatic ecosystem, a marine ecosystem specifically, it often uh, it it can have a um, a smaller um, a smaller base. So the producers tend to be smaller in terms of biomass than the consumers. Now this can occur when you've got a high productivity rate or high production rate. The actual amount of phytoplankton at any one stage is less than the uh, biomass of the zooplankton. However, because it has a high primary production rate, it's able to produce um, sufficient biomass to sustain that ecosystem. And then we've got our pyramid of energy. Now this cannot be inverted because ultimately you need to have a larger, you obviously you need to have a larger amount of energy to produce a level uh, because it diminishes uh, as you go further through the ecosystem. Um, ultimately, what limits the, um, the size of an ecosystem and the number of trophic levels is the energy transmission and the energy efficiency. So here's an example of a question that you might find in the external exam. So this one asks you, uh, it, there's a, this is a biomass pyramid, and they actually give you some values in kilograms. Contrast the efficiency of the biomass transfer between each level of the pyramid, and explain the difference in biomass transfer efficiency that you identified here. The ecosystem shows a drop in efficiency from 10% to 5%. Okay, one mark for calculating primary uh, producers to primary consumers, one mark for working out primary to secondary, and then another mark for actually making that statement. Now, explain, explain the difference. Explain why it becomes less efficient. This is where you're linking it to your understanding of the science. And as we mentioned, as you move to higher trophic levels, a higher proportion of the energy is lost through cellular respiration as heat and also to decomposers. Overall, there's a smaller percentage passed on to the next trophic level.